William Vaughn here with a walkthrough of creating a basic coin rig in Moto. There are many ways to set up a coin rig, but for this example, I thought I'd use this walkthrough as a way to demonstrate some of the cool rigging options available in Moto. This easy to construct rig will enable you to animate a coin in a variety of fun ways. Let's get started. In a new scene, create a cylinder that's one meter in diameter, 100 millimeters thick in the Y axis with 48 sides. Rename the mesh item coin. Of course, this is much larger than a traditional coin, but working at this size will streamline the walkthrough. Feel free to create any size coin you'd like. Use ground align by activating the tool and clicking in the viewport to position the coin mesh on zero in the Y axis. Add a material tag to the coin using the keyboard shortcut M. Next, select a couple polys on the front, back, and sides and assign a different material tag to them. This will help us see the rig in action later. Create a locator and rename it Master Coin. Change the item's color to make it easier to locate once the scene has additional items in it. We can also change the way the locator is displayed in the 3D viewport by changing the shape attribute to custom. For this item, I'll change the shape to circle, disable the solid attribute, change the axis to Y, and increase the radius attribute. Switch to the display tab, click add draw option, change wireframe attribute to user, and pick a new color. This determines the color that it'll be displayed in the 3D viewport. Create another locator and rename it Main Tilt. Next, move it 500 millimeters in the X so that it sits on the edge of the coin. Change the item color display properties and wireframe color to your liking. For this example, I'll use a circle shape again. Create another locator and rename it Control Center. Move it 50 millimeters in the Y axis. And for this one, I'll skip the custom shape and simply decrease the size attribute. Duplicate the Control Center locator and rename it Control Spin. Change its display properties to make it different from the center locator. You can change the viewport shading style at any time to make it easier to see all the components that make up the rig. Create a new locator, name it Control Bank Right, and move it 500 millimeters in the X. Its location should match the main tilt locator. Duplicate this locator and rename it Control Bank Left. Then move it negative 500 millimeters in the X so that it sits on the opposite edge of the coin. Create another locator and name it Control Bank Front and move it to 500 millimeters in the Z. And then duplicate that locator and rename it Control Bank Back and move it negative 500 millimeters in the Z. Select all the locators and change their size to 100 millimeters. With the locators created and in position, let's start creating a hierarchy that we can use as the core of our rig. Parent main tilt to master coin by simply dragging main tilt onto master coin in the item list. Then parent center to main tilt, spin to center, bank right to spin, bank left to bank right, bank front to bank left, bank back to bank front, and finally parent the coin mesh item to the bank back locator. Let's test the parenting to see the current state of the rig. We can already see some of the functionality in action, but it would become tedious to have to select all these controls when animating. Let's enhance the setup. Create a new locator and rename it Control Master. Move it one meter in the Y so that it sits above the main rig. Change its shape to sphere, disable the solid attribute, and decrease the radius attribute to 100 millimeters. We'll use the schematic view to wire up the Control Master to the locators below. Select the rotation channels for the Control Master from the channels list, then left click and drag them into the schematic. Select the main tilt item, right click on the rotation Z channel, and choose Add to Schematic. Next, click the Add button in the Schematic viewport and navigate to the Conditional Modifiers. Left click and drag a Logic A is less than B modifier into the schematic. Link the Master Rotation Z to value A, change if false to output value B, and then link the output of the Logic modifier to Rotation Z of Main Tilt. Now when the Master Controller is rotated on the Z, any negative value will rotate the Main Tilt locator but positive values won't have any effect. Add the rotation Z channel for the bank left locator. Then left click and drag a logic A is greater than B modifier into the schematic. Link the master rotation Z to value A, change if false to output value B, and then link the output from the logic modifier to rotation Z of bank left. If we test the controller, we can see that the left and right sides of the coin are all set. Add the Rotation X channel for the bank front locator. Add another A is greater than B modifier into the schematic. Then link the master Rotation X to value A. Change if false to output value B, and then link the output from the logic modifier to the Rotation X of bank front. Add the Rotation X channel for the bank back locator. Add another A is less than B modifier into the schematic. Link the master Rotation X to value A. 
change if false to output value B, and then link the output from the logic modifier to the rotation X of bank back. You can minimize the nodes to make room in the schematic and to clean up the display. Add the rotation Y channel for the spin locator to the schematic, and then link the master rotation Y to the spin rotation Y channel. To stay organized, we can select all of these items in the schematic and use the keyboard shortcut B to group them into a backdrop. Left click the title and rename it, and then right click the top bar and edit its color. The more complex your schematic becomes, the more you'll want to take advantage of these backdrops. If we test the controller now, we can see the progression of the rig. We can use the Y rotation to spin the coin, but if we want to have it appear to rotate in a circle on its edge when the coin is tilted, we can take advantage of an expression modifier. Add the coin's rotation Y channel to the schematic. Next, add an expression modifier. Link the rotation X from the master controller to input A, and rotation Y from the master controller to input C. If we type in A, explanation point equals B, question mark C, colon D, Moto will send the value of input C to the output if input A is not equal to input B. Otherwise, Moto sends the value of input D. To give the appearance that the coin is spinning properly, we'll want to invert the value that comes out of the expression output. To do this, simply add a multiply math modifier, change the value B to negative one, then link the output into value A and the result into the coin's rotation Y channel. Select these new components, hold down shift and drag them into the backdrop to add them to the backdrop. Now, if we test the rig, we can see that the coin will spin normally when not tilted but will appear to spin on its edge when tilted. To avoid the need to activate the rotate tool every time we click on the master controller, we can automate the process by going to the assembly tab and choosing rotate tool from the command attribute. Now when the controller is selected, the rotate tool will be activated automatically. While this might seem trivial, it can save time when animating. Now that we have that set up, all that's left is to set up the rolling aspect of the rig. Now would be a good time to save your scene and then we'll come back and get started. Create a new locator and rename it Control Revolve. For this locator, I'll use the rhombus shape, disable solid, and change its size to 350 millimeters. Next, select the revolve locator and control select the center locator and add a position constraint. This will make the revolve locator move with the center locator, but unlike parenting, it won't affect rotation. Next, add a revolve modifier to the schematic viewport. This modifier is often used to rig wheels on a vehicle as it computes a rotation value from a given radius and a percentage traveled along a specified length. Add the world position and rotation channels for the master locator and connect them to the revolve modifier. Add the revolve locator's rotation X channel to the schematic and feed the revolve modifier's output into the revolve locator's rotation X channel. Change the radius attribute for the revolve modifier to 500 millimeters to match the dimensions of the coin. Next, link the master control position Z channel to the main tilt position Z, so that the main rig will move when the master controller is moved in the Z axis. Select the center locator and then control click the revolve locator and add a rotation constraint. Next, click add output options and set Z to zero. We don't want the revolve rotation Z axis to control the center locator as that's being controlled by the main tilt. Now, if we test the rig, we can see it's fully operational. If the coin is tilted vertically, we get a nice straight roll. But if it's tilted at an angle, it'll wobble when it rolls. We could call this rig finished, but there's really no reason to leave all the locators displayed as they can be distracting while animating. Instead of manually hiding each locator, let's create a visibility toggle. Select the master controller, navigate to the user channels tab, and click add user channel. Give the channel a name, choose boolean as the type, and change the default value to one and click OK. In the schematic, add an A is equal to B modifier. Link the new user channel to value A, change value B to one, true value to one and false value to two. Change if true to output true value, and if false to output false value. Select all of the locators you'd like to hide and add their visibility channel to the schematic. Next, link the output to each of the locators visibility channel.
With this setup, when the user channel is toggled on and off, it'll hide and unhide the locators. Spend some time exploring the various locator options, such as shapes, sizes, and color, and customize the rig to your liking. Then simply have fun using it to animate a coin.